What's up guys, JV2017 here, and this time we're taking a break from the trailer analysis videos to talk about how we can all prepare for the Automatron DLC. It's only four short days away, and I know we all want to hit the ground running and make sure that our characters are fully equipped to handle the new content. Today we're going to go over some perks, weapons, and other things we can be doing in order to prepare for the DLC. Let's start out with the most basic requirement, and that's that you must be level 15 or higher to play the new content. Plain and simple, you won't have access to it unless you hit that level requirement. And I get a lot of questions about whether you'll need to start a whole new character or not, and I think this comes from a lot of new players that are, you know, new to the Fallout franchise, they don't really know how it's worked in the past. And the simple answer is no, you do not need to start a whole new character in order to experience this content. It doesn't matter what level you are or what you've done in the game, you just need to be at least level 15. You may be wondering how that's supposed to work and how this content is supposed to be delivered to you, and in the past Bethesda has introduced most DLC with a radio signal or just a quest that pops up once you hit the certain level requirement. If I had to guess, Bethesda is going to do the same kind of similar thing. It's going to be introduced to us in that kind of way. and. And don't worry, if you're like level 70 or something way above the level requirement, you may find the quest to start the Automatron DLC in your Pit Boy already. It might be there, or again, we might see the radio signal. But the big thing I'm trying to get you guys to take away here is don't worry. If you're worrying, do I need to start a new character? Blah, 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 blah. Stop your worrying. You will be fine. It doesn't matter if you pick the Institute, if you pick the Brotherhood. This DLC really happens kind of isolated from the rest of the events of Fallout 4. You don't have to worry about any of that. Moving on, let's look at a few perks that you should definitely consider taking because they will be helpful to you, at least I'm assuming they will be, in this upcoming DLC, and they are Science, Gun Nut, and Robotics Expert. Judging from the trailer and how the crafting systems worked in the vanilla game, you know, creating turrets and whatnot, I would assume that we would need some of the same basic perks to build robots. For example, you need science and gun nut already to create different variations of turrets to defend settlements in the base game. You need that already, and so I'm assuming, hey, we're probably going to need these things going forward with this DLC. And since we're going to be creating our own custom robot companions, I have to assume that we'll need those perks in some form or fashion. Now, I don't expect these to be required for basic mods. I'm sure Bethesda doesn't want to alienate the people that have made characters and, you know, taken them all the way, but hey, they're low intelligence, for example, which which means you pretty much get none of these perks. I doubt they're going to do that. But I am betting that we will need science and gun nut for more advanced mods. And also I'm betting that robotics expert will play some kind of role in this DLC because up to this point, the perk hasn't been that useful to me anyway. And it was broken from launch until Bethesda fixed it in a recent update patch. And you know, it is fixed now, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that robotics expert probably plays a role in this DLC. It'll be more important than it was before. And the main reason for that is it just makes sense. You know, it would make sense to require Robotics Expert for super advanced or unique mods since it is quite the investment way down in Intelligence 8. I don't think it'll be a basic requirement because that would be, again, ridiculous and alienating a ton of people with their builds, but I'm sure it will play a role. Next, in terms of weapons, you really want anything with the Troubleshooters modifier. And it's time to break out that collection of legendary weapons that you've been saving for a rainy day, right? Uh, maybe some of you have been doing that, while others have probably just been selling or dropping all these legendary items because so many drop on higher difficulties. So the Troubleshooter's modifier grants plus 50% damage to robots, and as far as we can tell, we're going to be fighting plenty of robots. And if you're playing a ranged character, it's going to be a little bit more tough to find, you know, these legendary weapons with that modifier on it because you're just, you know, relying on RNG and you know random drops for that but if you play a melee character and have some extra caps lying around you are in luck general chow's revenge is a very accessible and affordable unique chinese officer sword with the troubleshooters modifier on it so you'll do again plus 50 percent damage towards robots with this weapon and it's available at the drumlin diner which is a little bit south of the starting area so it's very easy to get to you just have to make sure that trudy is still alive if you're playing like a long deep game and you might have killed her earlier in the game because there's a quest involving choosing one side or the other she can be dead but if she's still alive she'll sell you general chow's revenge for only a few thousand caps i believe it's not that expensive if you've done all else to prepare i would say the last thing you could do is to scavenge and really just stock up on those robot based materials gear screws iron steel a lot of other things that might go into the these robot mods and honestly there will probably be plenty of this gathered in the DLC itself when it comes out since we'll be fighting robots 99% of the time but if you've done everything else you know you have nothing else to do you're just waiting on this DLC it may make life easier when automatron actually comes out if you have all of these you know materials already as far as I 
can tell there's not much else we can really do to prepare for this DLC just make sure you have that level 15 character and you'll be ready to go so I'd like to hear from you guys are you making a new character for this DLC or are you just using a high level character maybe your main character as some people like to call it you know that you've been rolling with the entire time since Fallout came out in November you could really take it both ways honestly I'm considering starting a new character just because it's been so long since I've started a new character I haven't done a lot of build guides lately I'm kind of feeling like I want to start a new character that's really specifically tailored for the automatron DLC so I'd like to hear from you guys what are your perspectives on this again you don't have to start a new character but hey it might be a good point to kind of refresh start a new character and maybe take that character through the next two DLCs that are coming out after automatron I'm also considering doing a let's play kind of series here on the channel for a automatron DLC maybe starting a new character at around level 15 picking up the DLC immediately throwing on the webcam and recording a few episodes of that so let me know if that's something you guys would like to watch here on the channel in the comments below all right guys today I showed you how to prepare for the upcoming automatron DLC and next time we will cover more fallout on my channel so stay tuned for fallout 4 tips and tricks videos if you learned something new remember to hit that like button I would really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe for more DLC coverage build guides and general tips and tricks videos talk to you guys next time peace